the QAnon shaman, you might be aware of him, Matt, uh, Jacob Chansley. Right. Um, he He's the guy that went to the Capitol shirtless. He wears the big horns on his head. Um, he is one of the most devoted QAnon followers. He hired a bit of a an eccentric lawyer who spoke to the press today, or it was yesterday. The lawyer's name is Albert Watkins. And he had something to say to Donald Trump uh, about the trial of all of his supporters um, who stormed the Capitol on January 6th. After, after spending this much time talking to David Chansley and learning about him, what do you think is appropriate accountability for former president? What do I think about his what? It, what, is, what is an appropriate accountability for former President Trump? Um, well, if you're asking my opinion, uh, you know, my opinion is meaningless. I will say that I would probably be far more effective over a beer with President, former President Trump, even if he didn't have a beer, because I understand he doesn't drink beer, but I'd have a beer. And I'd tell him, you know what, you got a few fucking things to do, including clearing this fucking mess up and taking care of a lot of the jackasses that you fucked up because of January 6th. Now, in the meantime, I might talk to him about some other things that I'd agree with him on. But my opinion doesn't mean shit. <laughs> Listen, like this is this is the same guy who uh, was basically calling his own client like like uh, crazy. And how, uh, right. Well, yeah. I think he might have used the R word. Oh, yeah. OK, even even better. But I mean, that he really was like a, he swears like a sailor, that man. Right. right. The I mean, that, is, the that is the best play for these p- people, especially the QAnon people who were down there on January 6th, to be honest, because it's the most based in reality for them specifically. They are. uh, uh <laughs> They need a lot of help. They really do. They're not the same. And, you know, I I, I tweeted this, um, you know, uh, the Qunan shaman, the fact that he got the same um, the same sentence as 41 months uh, for just the obstruction of like the 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 electoral thing um, as a guy who also got hit with the charge of assaulting a police officer, a former MMA fighter who was down there. I mean, it, it it's it shows that just like, you know, his getup basically made him the face of this whole thing to the world. So he is going to be the one made the example of when this is a guy and this is not showing sympathy for him or anything. He clearly needs to face consequences. But the idea that he's the one who's going to face probably the most consequences simply because he stood out, uh, a guy who did not have anything to do with the plotting or planning of any of this, did not brainwash anyone. He's not even an influencer in the QAnon world. He literally is just one of the many followers himself. Uh, it's It just shows how everyone else who was involved here from the militia groups to the white supremacist gangs like the proud boys the three percenters uh up all the way to trump himself are getting away with this with either very little punishment or no punishment no consequence at all and it just is a perfect example of how the justice system works that even like even someone that the QAnon, someone like the QAnon shaman who's like obviously is someone who probably never even looked at this stuff and cared about how the the criminal justice system worked he's still going to be the one because he's just a nobody facing all the blame from this right i mean donald trump should be facing some consequences that is why you know it's important that the the congressional investigation into this continues and has teeth right um that's why it was important that garland enforced uh the congressional subpoena when it came to steve bannon because those are some of the powers that be that need to face consequences but he's absolutely right that the 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 top of uh the top of all of this is donald trump that's why trump's trying so hard to conceal his presidential records in this area when it comes when uh, in regards to january 6 i mean we we don't we have words out of his own mouth in public about encouraging this kind of stuff imagine what we're going to see behind the scenes um well i mean just to jump in on that point too i think that you know it can't be understated that that's also part of the strategy of these types of far-right demagogues like trump like the people who were promoting this event who do not face any consequences to surround themselves with this layer of the more credulous members of our society who, you know, if you're going to be incredibly generous, are being tricked by various means via like, you know, Facebook conspiracy groups that make them feel like their alienation as a result of capital is actually the cause of some grand conspiracy Mm -hmm. or, you know, any number.
number of vectors that get them there that day. But, you know, we know all that stuff. And when the left tries to combat it, when, you know, various outlets are promoting the kinds of people who like traffic in these circles and promote these ideas, you know, we're taught that it's like canceling them to warn people that like who they're going to, you know, who they're running around with the Richard Spencer's of the world, like the far right demagogues like Steve Bannon, well, I guess he's, you know, been indicted, but for the most part, they're going to get away with it while this layer of like, um, you know, reactionary everyday Americans are going to be, you know, everyday Americans in quotes are going to be sent to, you know, prison for 41 months and the sort of right wing media grift is just going to continue. Well, like, that's there were, a, yeah, I mean, that's the Republican playbook one on one on one with this, this, especially now they I mean, we have a clip of Marjorie Taylor Greene. Uh, coming up where she talks about how basically uh democrats have to to pay with blood or uh you won't actually sorry you you, you need to get your freedom back and it, the price of blood will essentially need to be paid i'm, I'm paraphrasing but she talks about blood that the right wingers want to to uh create a violent energy and and make sure their base feels like their doom is imminent and it's an existential threat and violence might be necessary up to a point and then they scurry away once it finally boils over um and it's like so that's why this lawyer was i mean one he kind of he he reminds me of billy bob thornton did anyone catch that vibe can we play it just one more time just one more time it's short because i just love his energy um maybe we'll pick up on another you know beautiful wrinkle to this answer to the media. After, after spending this much time talking to David Sansley and learning about him, what do you think is appropriate accountability for former president? What do I think about his what? It, what, is, what is an appropriate accountability for former president Trump? Um, well, if you're asking my opinion, uh, you know, my opinion is meaningless. I will say that I would probably be far more effective over a beer with president, former President Trump, even if you didn't have a beer because I understand he doesn't drink beer, but I'd have a beer. And I'd tell him, you know what? You got a few fucking things to do, including clearing this fucking mess up and taking care of a lot of the jackasses that you fucked up because of January 6th. Now, in the meantime, I might talk to him about some other things that I'd agree with him on. But my opinion doesn't mean shit. Yeah, the thing thing is like- I'd have a beer with that guy. I think that this guy is going to be central to a lot of people's theories that this whole thing was a false flag. This guy's Eh, performance here. eh. He's, he's, he's pretty much, I think what a lot of people view as like a, a, like trope of a lawyer, to be honest. I think. Exactly. Uh, too, too much, like too much. like a character. <laughs> said. No, but I mean, I, I joke, but I think there's a good chance that like the, you know, sort of arc of this uh, conspiracy ends with, you know, a lot of people who end up going to jail being disavowed by the, the communities that they were part of as being like infiltrators or like false flags. And like, you know, maybe no one actually went to jail and this was just a way to make president Trump look worse. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this all happened over the course of like three you months. Know- you know what they they do do they already they did that right away actually they yeah. right away portrayed these folks as not being really them but then at the same time they're promoting Ashley Babbitt the woman who lost her life breaking through the window to try to get into the house uh, chambers area they portray her as being in there as a true patriot trying to save the election for Trump and you know the interesting thing there is like they try to paint her as a sympathetic figure uh, because she was a patriot who lost her life for, you know, but the, the reality is, you know, it, she is sort of a, a figure to feel bad for, but not for the reason they say. She was a brainwashed person who lost her life because they used her. People like Trump and those other people in his orbit used her as a pawn. They used her, just her body to get what they wanted for their own benefit. She had nothing to win out of what she did. Nothing to gain, I should say, out of what she did. Everything to lose. And she lost her life over it. And for that, I truly do think, yeah, it's sad what happened to her, that a life was taken because these people brainwashed her and used her for their own gain when she had nothing to gain and everything to lose. No, I agree. I mean, I think you can acknowledge it's sad without being like, you know, I don't know, uh, what's the word, like excuse 
excusing their actions because ultimately right. I think that for the most part, they're like, you know, right-wing media, right-wing dem demagogues are allowed to do this because it inflames the Republican Party's base. It makes a lot of people rich. And, you know, the human cost of that is presented as though it's always just going to be diffused out amongst the population of like, you know, a few hate crimes here or there, you know, a general feeling of malaise or reactionariness in the culture. But now that it's sort of being shown, just like we talked about earlier, that there's going to be a cost to the people who are participating. And, you know, your racist uncle is going to not only be caught up in January 6th, but maybe die of COVID, a lot more people are, you know, becoming a little bit more uh, edgy about engaging in this kind of rhetoric. And, you know, at the end of the day, like people on the left, like, like people who are arguing that you shouldn't like, platform a lot of these people are like not responsible for the outcome of this rampant, you know, like, I don't say um, this rampant pipeline, pipeline that exists, you know, on YouTube, this rampant pipeline that exists from like, you know, mainstream pundit circles to far left, I mean, to far right uh, demagogues like Ben Shapiro. It's not like, you know, we have set, a, set back without doing anything. It's just every time you speak out about this pipeline or like any individual part of it, people say you're canceling somebody and you're not allowed to do that. Yep. Exactly. Awesome possum. Is Michael Flynn going to face accountability for January 6th? Uh, one can hope. That guy is a scary, scary individual. And uh, don't what? forget that his his brother is literally leading, uh, uh, I don't know the exact terminology because I'm not a, a military guy. He's a high up military official. The Army of the Pacific. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I was going to say some sort of battalion or something. He's leading something in the military. Uh, just Army in the Pacific, which is like... I think it's a, yeah, they're just terrifying, right? Like, uh, is the Pacific Ocean is that is that important? Big, um, anyway. Um, this is great. Risking imagination, QAnon shaman getting a tough sentence is like taking season tickets away from Gorilla Rilla for Gruden's emails. <laughs> that's the guy that dresses up uh, at, the, at the Raiders games. It's really funny. Um, as a, as a non sports person, I think I even got that one. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Trump's trying so hard to conceal his presidential records in this area when it comes when uh, in regards to January. January 6th. I mean, 